First of all, let me extend a very happy new year to you as you join with me on this side by side for the beginning of the year 2021. It's my hope and my prayer that I can, by the grace of God, help to open the eyes of others to see and understand. And not merely to make people feel good, but to actually do them good. I think that is so important that if you're praying for me, that I'll be able to do that. I was listening recently to a little interview with someone on the radio and how they were able to make people feel good by some of the things that they had done for them in life. But I realised that they hadn't actually done them any good, hadn't moved them on beyond their struggles and their problems in, in a way that it could be possible. And, and I thought about what we try to do as we share from God's Word. We are trying to help people discover something that really does them good. Now, as you and I begin this new year, a lot of time can be taken up, maybe even wasted, I think, reflecting over the past year, which has had all its troubles and problems. And like the Apostle Paul, I want to forget those things which are behind and press on towards the future, the future that God is calling us towards. So today I've decided to talk about a picture that I find in the Bible and over the next few days maybe to draw on other pictures in the Bible that will help us focus our mind on few, a few very important truths. The one that I have for us today is found in Jeremiah 17 and in verse 8. And this is what the word says, Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters that spreads out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat comes, but her leaf will be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. This is a set in the context, this verse, of two trees really. Earlier on in verse 6 it talks about those who don't trust in God as being like a dead, barren, dry stick in the wilderness when the drought has come. And the story of the Christian community and God's people is one of great inspiration in this regard. Maybe you remember, or if you haven't, you can go back and you can listen to the accounts that we gave, maybe in The Hiding Place, Greenleaf and Drought, among others, books that we read over a period of weeks in order to encourage people to realise that God is to be trusted in the hard time. But not only is God to be trusted, God is the one who, who, not, who, who comes to us and in these hard times and in these times of what are described here is when the heat comes, they continue to bear fruit and green leaves. In other words, when life is difficult for the Christian, it can be a time of continued growth and progress and blessing. And I know that this year is going to be no different than last year in that regard because there will be trouble, there will be difficulty, and we know that the word already is that the first few months of 2021 might get worse before they get better in the respect of the pandemic and all the things that come as a consequence of that. So as we turn to these verses today, Jeremiah 17, verse 8 particularly, Remembering our, here the wider context is that of God's judgment upon the people of Judah because it says they have forgotten him, they have chosen to follow the pagan gods and the limited skills of other people. The word says, cursed is the man that trusts in man, that is, as opposed to primarily trusting in God. It's not saying that we should not trust the gifts that God has given man in medicine and other areas. Of course, we we thank God for those, but we primarily do not put our trust only in human beings. That's a sort of humanism that is very much the dominant thinking and worldview of the Western world today. But what it says here, it, it looks that we are being set for some weeks of maybe trouble and difficulty. So what do we do then to put our roots down into this resource? Because, well, we have these hidden resources. And I think... By turning towards him in worship, love, prayer and devotion, this is an expression of our trust. When the word says, blessed is the one that trusts in the Lord, that trust has got to be expressed. 
I mean, I hear people saying to me, well, I trust in the Lord and I, I don't really know what they mean because it's a trust that doesn't seem to have any practical outworking. It, it's more or less saying, well, I'm, I kind of put my trust, I'm kind of, you know, I hope it'll be all right, nearly. It's maybe like saying that. Whereas someone that says, I actively trust in the Lord, that cannot but be seen in their life, in their words, in their character and attitude and behavior and all things about them. And so it is truly by worship, love, prayer and devotion that we will express our trust. And especially when things are not easy. You see, as we continue to express our worship, our love, our prayer and our devotion, when times are hard, that's when we really demonstrate that we trust him. Well, it's easy to speak well of God and praise and worship him when everything's well and whenever the wind is on our back and the sun in our face. But then it's like Job and how Satan said, take all these things away from him, all the supports, and he will curse you to your face. But you see, Job demonstrated his trust in that he wouldn't do that. Job instead continued to praise God. So by speaking well of God and often of him and his goodness already known in our Lord Jesus Christ, we're affirming our trust. By praying for other people, helping in our trouble, we express trust in God. Isn't it just great to know that this picture, which is so easy to get in our minds, a tree almost standing alone in the barren landscape, that maybe the riverbed has dried because the water has stopped, but yet there is a deeper resource hidden from the eyes and sight of people. We as God's children, with that picture in our mind, can also remember the, the amazing resources we have that are hidden to the world. We are connected livingly to the very Lord of the universe and to his body, the church, which I think sadly many people neglect today. The individualism of our culture, and that has been really, in many ways, it's gone to other extremes during this lockdown and restrictions, I think. But the body of Christ is a great resource we find among one another that we can affirm and encourage and uphold one another, reminding each other of the living promises and, and the living love and faith that we have among each other. So we are connected to these. The question is, how connected? It's roots that go down deep. That's our faith. That's our act of faith. But the challenge and encouragement then isn't it surely to actively do this daily and constantly. Now, I hope that I can be a small part of that for you as I try to encourage you as part of the body of Christ. That's all I'm doing. I'm just another Christian seeking to serve you as you're seeking to serve others and maybe me as you pray for me. And I certainly really value your prayers and I'll never hesitate to ask for help for prayer. And, and I hope you will not hesitate to ask as well. You know, you can contact us. You can contact me directly through my, my email address, which is johnkirkpatrick56 at gmail.com. I don't mind you contacting me if you want to mention things for prayer, anything we can do to encourage you to keep flourishing in these hard times. Remember this, that God's love is like a river in full spate, even it cannot be seen by others. It will never dry up. Why? Because God and all his gifts and love are eternal. And it's into that love in Christ that your roots are planted. So, as perhaps it's been said by others, let's go out today and by the grace of God, let's flourish even in the hardest places for his glory. Father, as we begin our year, I just want to pray for all of us that we might truly be those trees whose roots go deep into your promises, into your word, and into the work of your Son revealed to us in Scripture. That we might remember the many resources that you have given us, the, uh, the wonderful gift of your Holy Spirit who brings alive all of these things, the many, many promises in Scripture that have already been fulfilled and are being fulfilled in us and those that we yet look forward to completing. O oh Lord, in each of our lives, would you be the mighty resource for us 
and us then for one another to the praise and glory of your name. Amen.